Bandwidth for all shows on the Aussie Tech Heads network is supplied by Aussie Tech Heads web hosting for a fast, affordable and reliable Australian server with fantastic support. Contact Aussie Tech Heads web hosting at aussietechheads.com.au. Aussie Tech Heads, Australia's best hosting service. It's a big welcome to a big episode 400. How are you doing, Aussie Tech Heads? We're with you once again this week. It is brought to you by athwebhosting.com.au. So jump on the website there and go and have a look at some little plans we've got going all on Australian Soil Service. So they're nice and fast, snappy as. So if you want to uh, get some e-commerce sites going, there's plenty of free ways to do it. Uh, you can install Magento, WordPress, and all this sort of stuff. Joomla, they've all got uh, e-commerce sites, Ozcart, blah, blah, blah. And uh, well, look, we can talk to a guy that's probably installed one a bit later on, because Will, he's installed one. So let's uh, actually, let's mm-hmm. go and talk to Will now. Just say a quick hello. Hello, Will. How are you doing? How do, how do. Good to be here for, uh, well, half of your episodes anyway. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's good to have you. And uh, yeah, how you been this week? You've got the big Google, uh, the snail mail envelope in the background there on the video. Yeah, well, I figured, you know, when, I figured when uh, ATH started, that would have been a thing, wouldn't it? Like, that's how they would have delivered your search results. <laughs> yeah, something like that. They still do, don't oh, they? Oh, good God, probably. <laughs> and, oh, they do in Melbourne with the NBN. Yeah, <laughs> at the moment, that's Tracking the way they're working it. <laughs> and, of course, that we, is Eric. How are you doing, Eric? Hello, Glenn. Thanks Hello. for, thanks Hello. for joining us on this uh, 400th episode. It's, uh, Very welcome. Hmm. Happy to be here. Oh, that's good. And, and congratulations. Thank you. It's uh, not a not nothing special tonight. It's just a normal show. It's just uh just get through it the the best we can, the best way we know how to, even after blue screens before we before we started. <laughs> Things haven't changed since episode one. I will tell you, we've still got uh, blue screens and audio issues and all that sort of stuff. But look, we're going to um we're going to take a call from a from our probably our longest listener first of all because he is on the line and uh, while he's on the line he can't watch the stream. So we better get into him. <laughs> <laughs> so we can get back to watch the stream. <laughs> and I, was, I should have had a picture, actually, so we could have put him up on the live stream. So, uh, But anyway, it's uh, Milo. How are you doing, Milo? Oh, pretty good. That's good. Now, what have you been up to? You, you're down, where are you? You're way down below Sydney, aren't you? Yeah, I'm about three hours south of Sydney in a little place called Nara. Oh, yes, yes. And I, I believe you get pretty cold down there from what I see on your Facebook. Yeah, currently it's about eight degrees, something like that. But I'm probably dropping down to about five tonight. Oh right, Jesus, dear, oh dear. And now, Milo, you've been listening to the show since episode one, I believe. Pretty much, yeah, pretty much since the days of Mark and and Reg. And, oh yes, uh, that's a long time ago. Very long time ago. Yes, yeah. So what? How did you come across us all those years ago? If you can remember, did you think, "What's right, this rubbish"? <laughs> <laughs> it's just something like that. Um, I've always, I've always been in, in a tech computers, and um, I probably spend more time on the computer than I do watching TV. I hate TV. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm and a, I'm a radio guy, so I, I like audio. And I think I just stumbled across you guys because I got sick of listening to American rubbish, mm, well, uh, tech stuff, you know. Yeah. Well, we're glad you did. We're glad you did. So uh, you've been here for 400 weeks. That's a big chunk of your life, Milo. So thanks. Thank you. Um, That's all right. I hope, I hope you've had something to eat in that time, Milo. A <laughs> uh, bit of Milo here and there. So I tell there you, you, like, you, you could you could potentially listen to an episode back to back. How long is that going to take you? So 400. Oh, Glenn. <laughs> could you dig out episode one, please? I could. A, right. I've got a, Just have a. a <laughs> A snippet of that, and we'll we'll have a little bit of a giggle, a bit of <laughs> reminiscing. Well, let's go. Four hundred divided by fifty, no, twenty-four for twenty-four hours. So, oh, it'd be sixteen days non-stop Aussie tech heads, eh? How would you like that? Wow, yeah. that's not bad. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> that's all right. Now could let be, me. Yeah. Could be worse. Could let be me. worse. <laughs> yeah, it could be seventeen days. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be 700 days. That's right. Now, listen, uh, look, I've re- Eric's requested uh, a bit of the first show. So let me see if I can find that on my uh, little PewDie 
my computer here. Yeah, I just searched for it too and realized, um, hmm, it's on my server and my server's down, it seems. <laughs> oh, no. Well, I think my server Ooh, is yeah. up. So <laughs> let's have a look here. Um, where are you? You're asking, you're asking me to delve into the archives here, Eric. Uh, it wasn't episode one like five minutes and that was patched together over about 15 hours. <laughs> uh, all, the, uh, audio, all the old audio issues that used to... Although it's funny, it's gone from, you know, having heaps of technical issues to having heaps of technical issues. So it hasn't really changed all that much. <laughs> no, that's right. It's gone full, gone full circle. Oh, here we go! I found it. Here we go. Let's have let's have a bit of a look. This is the first episode. I, I think it went out on the tenth of September, two thousand and six. That's a long time ago, isn't it? Here we go. Listen wow. to the in, intro music. It's a it's a blast. Can you hear that? Yeah, Ruby. <laughs> Here we go, it's kicking in now. Welcome to Aussie Tech Heads, podcasting live from the Secret Hub Studios on the Gold Coast, Australia. Sit back, relax, and listen for a while. It sounds like the audio is off a, a gramophone or something. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Aussie Tech Heads. Sorry, he's got throat cancer. <laughs> and that's Tech Heads with a T E C H. Uh, we oh, are the guys, City. Is Glenn and myself, Mark. Say hello, Glenn. Hello, everybody. And well, there you go. Cool. Oh. Let's go half. <laughs> Let's jump the halfway through. Oh my god! Hear that? PB Electronics Boutique pre-order now, and you get it for. That's right. Mark, Mark used to take us into EB Games. And uh, where else is EB? Burley, uh, Burley Heads. Beautiful tweet. Oh, they're everywhere. Is they're mine? everywhere, folks. Everywhere. Uh, no, it was in the he, re- Wii. he. He recorded it on a little. Um, Ta- tape recorder or something. I <laughs> check. Official Nintendo will be releasing the Wii before the PS3, and that rhymed. All right, signing off. <laughs> so how's my rhyme? Oh, those were the days. Uh, when is the Wii coming out before the PS3? Yeah. Oh, the PS3. Look, the iPhone oh, wasn't even really out. Wii and three. Look, let's just go back up to. Let's go three quarters of the way. No, that's bullshit. Oh, oh, but... It is an urban legend. One tick of a box in your preferences on iTunes and all that's gone. What about that? It does protect you, but let's not... What about the... Don't take me... Don't take me there, all right? The point of the matter is is iPod MP3 player. We're not talking about other formats. We're talking about MP3. Oh, there we go. MP3, iPods before the iPhone. So, yeah. Oh, dear. Wow. I know. Oh, it takes you back, doesn't it? It is a long time ago. Yeah, that's right. Uh, All right. Well, um... Yeah, well, thanks for ringing in, Milo. That's good. What what else do you do? You get on the internet as well, don't you? You've got you stream some uh, pages or you stream games or something. Yeah, I stream video games. You can check that out with my uh, website, uh, miloguy.com, dot com, hosted by Aussie Tech Heads. Nice. <coughs> That's right. Yes. And um, I do it via Twitch TV, and uh, I do Flight Simulator Ten, uh, Train Simulator, Truck Simulator. Sims 3, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, well done, well done. Now you got what? What is your site? Did you what? What is your site that you can people can go and have a look at this? Yep, just go to www.miloguy.com and all the links are there. All right. Now you also do live radio in your local radio station of a Friday night, most Friday nights. Most Friday nights at Triple U F M um, radio station, and once again, there's a link to my mix bag with Milo website uh, on the Milo Guy site as well all right good stuff all right we'll let you uh, i know the bandwidth is of a premium so we'll yep. get, get let you go back to the stream you can you can yep. uh, Congra- load the light congratulations glenn and everyone for uh, a great show thanks milo thanks for taking the time to call in and uh we'll catch up with you again soon cheers yeah, bye mate. All right. Now, look, we just got uh, one more. We got an email through the week as well. And uh, g'day, Glenn. Who would have thought that after Mark piked it, you would go on to record 400 episodes of Australia's longest running podcast? It is a mighty effort to commit yourself to producing ADH Weekly. And I enjoy listening very much. So thanks a lot for the entertainment. I was just talking to the Prime Minister. He sends his grats too. So <laughs> good yeah, on him. And good on you. It. That was from Michael B. <laughs> so hi, Michael B. And thank you for uh, the email. All right, let's uh, look. We can't go through emails and chat to people all night long, but let's go and do some stories, eh? Because that's the end of the day. That's what we're all here for. All right, well, let me uh, start off because I've got the first one. Uh, Google finally dropped the real name policy. So 
So if you if you know when you used to sign up to the Google Plus and to Gmail and all that, they did try and make sure that you used your real name. But it looks like, you know, that's uh, gone by the wayside. The concept behind the policy was sound, that people would be likely to engage in trolling and leaving abusive comments if it, if it was not under their real, if it was under their real name, or uh, not under their real name. Uh, so anyway, that's gone, gone to, gone to the, wherever it's gone. All right, that was a nice quick one to start off, wasn't it? Uh, Will, have you got a story, please? Yes, sir. Yeah, um, there's, uh, as you know, technology is constantly changing. We're up to, what are we up to now, 4G on the uh, on the good old wireless um, GSM network. So apparently Telstra is getting rid of the 2G network. Um, as of 2016, they're going to switch off their 2G GSM network. Uh, it's been powering the telecommunications industry for over 20 years now. Yeah, right. uh, it's basically reached its end of life. They're not using the they're not using it anymore. Um, today, Telstra's two G network carries just one percent of its overall voice traffic. Um, so yeah, it doesn't get used a lot anymore. They've basically they are offering the um, the uh, frequencies that they've that they were using, like Audi Mobile, Code and things like that. Use some of their two G frequencies. Um, so it'll be interesting to see exactly which frequencies are on the 2G versus the 3G part of it because I know a couple of the lower bandwidth ones um, But who's on 2G? Work. Who would have 2G? Well, it's not necessarily Lockyer. for phones. Well, yeah, oh. but I mean, it's not necessarily for phones per se. Like, for example, the alarm system that's in my car, which has a GSM fallback feature, um, it actually uses the lower 2G, 3G frequencies. So... It's going to kind of be a matter of which ones of those it uses because if I have to, you know, I'll have to find a, a network that's compatible with those frequencies now. Yeah, right. So, now, you sent me a link, talking about frequencies, you sent me a link not long ago about the wireless frequencies changing in Queensland. Yeah. <laughs> oh, isn't that a revenue-raising stun if ever I've seen one? Isn't that crazy? Yeah. <laughs> so everyone with a wireless microphone has to yep. ditch it. I don't know what sell it to someone in New South Wales or or and just get something else. Yeah, that's crazy. Pretty much. Um, that is crazy. I mean, crazy. everything from I'm looking around to try and find my wireless lapel mic, but um, everything, everything that basically you've bought over the last few years, you know, I think you've bought some of these too. These are the wireless, uh, the wireless lapel, you know, transmitters. Um, I checked the frequency out on that. That's technically illegal to operate now. Um, They're not going to you know. know. I'm, well, that's my question. I mean, I get kind of in a public place, you know, maybe say you're in a sports arena or a, uh, you know, a complex like that where there, there potentially could be interference with your, your equipment that is using that frequency. But if you're at home, out in a park, you know, at a wedding rehearsal, at the beach, whatever, I can't see how suddenly this technology is, you know, going to be a problem. What do they want to use in the in that same space? Do you have any idea? Well, they just want to sell the uh, they want to sell the frequency ranges. Yeah, right. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, you got you know to make mm. money, you you got to do something, haven't you? But it's no good, I'll tell you. I reckon what well, those cordless things only go for about 100 meters, is that right? Or if that. So um Yeah, yeah I mean yeah, it depends on right. depends on the power it's outputting and, and things like that. I mean, you know, you can get a high like some of the uh, AV senders that you use. See, that's the other thing too. Like, don't forget just microphones. AV senders like to send video signals. Um, as an example, I've got a mate who's got a drift car and he has GoPros on the car. He's got three of them. Hmm. And they obviously record locally, but because they stream the event on the internet, he actually has, each camera has an AV sender that sends back to, um, you know, the, the, the truck, which is, yep. you know, 500 metres back the other side of the arena. Yeah. Um, so now that they're going to be able to send the video, but they technically can't send the audio because it's on a band frequency. Yeah, no good. That's crazy stuff. Isn't it crazy? <laughs> it's just like, who, who does this? Yeah, I know. But anyway, uh, yeah, Queenslanders. Queenslanders, obviously. Yeah, well, no, love you all. Oh, mm. yes. <laughs> and, Someone's got to. <laughs> and uh, did you bring any stories, Eric? Or Because I've got a few there if you want to bang on about Apple. Well, I formatted my Mac, question, did I tell you? Which question... Question: Should I answer first? <laughs> <laughs> you can. Uh, have you got anything to uh, discuss with us this week? Have I got anything to contribute? Mm. Not at all. Good. But I'm happy to chat. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, well, how about Apple reaps a massive seven point seven billion dollar profit? How is it, that? That's uh, that's well, that's just for the quarter. Don't forget. Yes. <laughs> now this is yeah, uh, exactly. that's, that's not for a year. No. So that's up up nearly six percent from the same quarter last year. And this is this is net, isn't it? This is a net that's profit. Net. Their gross profit. Their, rep- their, their their turnover. Their sales for the quarter was thirty seven point four billion, and yeah. their net was seven point seven. So the sales are up six percent, and their quarterly net profit was up eleven and a half percent. So they've obviously cut some costs there. If your net's up that much, well, when your when your revenue only went up six, but your mm. but your uh, net's up eleven and a half. Yeah, so uh, that's a good effort, um, and that's when no re- no new releases of any new products in that period of time, except for the refresh of the iMac. I think yeah. they had. Yep. Uh, um, the, the they didn't have any new phones in that quarter. No new MacBook Pros. I think I do think uh, they re- did release the Mac Pro, the desktop, the mm. little cylinder thing. Oh that, yeah. That wouldn't have. So- I don't think that would have sold billions. They, have, they haven't been keeping up with demand on that, have they? I think people are screaming for, well, you know, screaming as much as they can. I think but so. They're not being made. They're very expensive too. They're very expensive. Well, they're five and a half grand um, or something. I nearly, I nearly succumbed and bought a fifteen-inch Retina. Oh right. Uh, not fifteen. Thirteen-inch Retina MacBook Pro M- during what, the week. And what else? And back? I thought, no, I can't. I can't because you know what's going to happen. They're going to release new products. Oh, yes, in yes. September. That's right. Uh, that's it. That's right. Um, and it'll be the same price, if not lower, and better specs. I'm thinking I'm just going to hang I'm just going to hang back. Well, sales of the iPhone in the quarter grew by 13.9 percent to how's this in the quarter? 35.3 yeah. million million. That's, in one quarter. It's, uh, it's in, just about inconceivable. Uh, meanwhile, iPad sales, poor things, down. Yeah, total 13.3 million, that's down 8.9 percent. So mm. uh, yeah, so I guess why would that be? Uh, maybe the ma- the market is there is saturated, like you know. I think a lot of people are going to Android tablets because they are a lot cheaper, mm-hmm. uh, and the resolution on the screens and the apps you can get are, are, are up to standard now. Whereas you know a few couple of years ago you'd laugh at an Android tablet. Now you know they they are making a case for their own. Mm. So you lose sales there. Yeah, you think that there'll be a new iMac iPad out this year as well. You would think. Well, I'm not sure because they brought out the iPad Air, that really light, thin thing, and yeah. didn't seem to make a dent. Yeah. Um, I've been reading that they 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 fear that the five and a half inch screen that they that they so are supposedly bringing out will be the death of the iPad. Right. Well, well, well why I don't would you know. need it? Well, the iPad Mini maybe, but I still like the ten inch screen. Maybe the iPad Mini. Well, yeah, I actually like the iPad Mini because it's not too big. Yeah, well, look, look, I think I would go for a bigger iPhone now. I had a change of heart on that. Uh, but anyway, although the company credited strong iPhone and Mac sales for its overall quarterly result, it also saw growth from other parts of Apple services ecosystem, including a 25% yep. gain in iTunes billings. Right. So there that's you interesting, go. isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Very interesting. <laughs> no, no, that's quite a lot. It is. That's was, a quarter. iTunes yeah. was in, in a bit of a doldrums for quite some time. Oh, really? You wouldn't... Mm-hmm. F- well, so they I, were very flat. People so, were still buying off them, you know, movies and things, but it was very flat. But iTunes as in, yeah, movies, music, apps, or just music yeah. movies? No, the, the iTunes, everything, apps, books, um, you know, music, TVs, mu- that sort of thing. Hmm. But it was, it was generally quite flat. Yeah. All right. Uh, look, now, Will's had a lot to say on this topic. So what about the Google Android, Will? What's happening there? <laughs> Nexus. I heard a rumor Nexus has uh, been leaked or something. Uh, there's, yeah, there's a couple of leaks out at the moment, but I'm waiting for, for, uh, confirmation on those before I go too much further with those. But, oh, right. uh, I've just sort of, th- there's been a few apps, a few, pr- uh, little devices that have tried this before. They've finally developed something useful for your headphone socket. Um, <laughs> cause let's face it, who uses like wired headphones other than that occasional time where you, <laughs> you know, you absolutely need to, but I mean, for, for the most part, it's never really used. Um, there's a, there's a this Kickstarter company that's just started up. A, um, they've got a little device called Pressy. And um, what it is, it's obviously it's a, a button that goes into your uh, headphone socket and 
it has an app with it that lets you configure um, how you use it. So it's got multiple tabs. It's got a long press. It's got one, two, three presses, things like that. And you can control what you want it to do. So if you double tap it, for example, um, it will, you know, play audio or play video or yeah, uh, right. it's, it can do things like it can do a discrete um, photo. So if you don't want somebody aware that you're taking photos you can or video of them, you can press it and it will automatically trigger whatever you've got it set up to do. So um, it's like 20 bucks. Neat little, neat little thing. I think I might get one just because um, I've often thought, well, it never hurts to have another button for a shortcut or something because, I mean... My, I've only got on the uh, note. I've only got the main, the main hardware button um, down the bottom, and um, the power button on the side is pretty much all you've got. So, like, well, that could be handy. It'll go on the top there, and it'll allow me to press it, and I can either just use it for photos, or I can use it. I would, in my case, I'd probably use it to launch the uh, SMS um, app because I oh, tend yeah. to send a lot of messages. And yeah. if you do it the other way, you've got to, you know, unlock your phone and stuff like that. But yeah, do you? So t- I reckon do that's you- pretty. Do you type your messages or, or are you speaking them? No, I type them because at work it's uh, too noisy. Oh, okay, and yeah. The voice, to, yeah. Oh, if okay. I'm like at home, it's not a problem. I, um, it's pretty good. You, you kind of got to learn to talk like Yank a bit to make it work properly, but mm. um, it, it's pretty good. It's, it's you know, probably 90% accurate, which is about as accurate as my typing, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's good. That's good. Now we'll talk while we're still on the on the mobile phones. There, uh, now we all know Uber. Apparently, we had Steve on the show a couple of weeks ago. Oh, and don't forget Battle Hack. I think that's this weekend. So, uh, if you're interested mm. in uh, developing code and winning prizes, uh, yeah, just Google Battle Hack. It's on this weekend. So hurry I'd, up! And sign I'd up. love to. I'd love to get to one of those just for the. Uh the envi- the uh, atmosphere, I reckon, would be pretty neat. Mm. Well, yeah, if there was one in Brisbane, Brisbane seems to miss out on a, a few things, but you know, it probably just doesn't yeah. have the population. But yeah, it'd be good to get down there, I suppose. Like, yeah, that'd be that'd be all right. But anyway, Uber is now on the Windows in, on the Windows Phone. Yay! Uh, I don't know why I put this one in, but I did. <laughs> the, uh, the platform that connects users with safe, reliable, and seamless transportation announced their official Windows Phone and app earlier today. So, if you got a Windows Phone. Uh, yeah, now, now I'll, I'll tell you why I did mention this is because it, it sort of relates to another story is that uh, Windows is, or well, Microsoft is trying to merge all the Windows platforms so it doesn't matter, so the app, you download the app, as it's one app and then it just sort of expands or whatever so it'll work on any device. Uh, now where's that? Basically story? they're doing what Apple's doing. Yeah, well it only makes sense, doesn't it really? Like it, it, it just no. does. Yeah, it, make, it makes sense. Um, Windows development is set to be unified by Microsoft. Here, here's that one here. So Microsoft has said, work is underway to unify parts of its different Windows operating systems. We will streamline the next version of Windows from three operating systems into one single converged operating system for screens of all sizes. Uh, said that I to, hope the yes. people that worked on Skype work on this. Why? Good job. Do you like Skype? Be a good job, guaranteed. <laughs> What, what are you are you liking Skype? Or you think a note <laughs> note to sarcasm. <laughs> and I, well, well well I put up pulled up Skype on my iMac. Or not my iMac, my Mac Mini. This guy's all right. I don't like it on the PC, to tell you the truth. Uh, anyway, Nadella said one target was for developers to be able to write a single app that would adapt its layout and control to suit whether it was being used on a phone, tablet, PC or games control. So there you go. Windows uh, 9 or whatever it's going to be. Hopefully, we'll uh, yeah, be just be cross-platform all the way. So that'd be that'd be excellent. All right. Now, look, I should Especially mention. Speaking of yeah, sorry. No, just sorry. before you do that, Will, I, sh- I was going to say sorry. I should mention uh, that Warlock or Jason is not here with us tonight. He is in Melbourne. He did make it. He drove down. He's he's in Melbourne. Hi, Jace. But uh, and he was going down to NBN Wonderment. You know, he, he, he's, <laughs> he's posting on Facebook. He's going, uh, he's got... Driving uh, to Utopia. Yes, and, and, and they were also... And ended up in 1985. <laughs> or before. But they, it's, he was driving down. He's got uh, home-delivered McDonald's, all this sort of oh. stuff, you know, like all this. And also uh, MBN. So he can't be with us tonight, not because he's too busy surfing and Eating. speeding the uh, <laughs> the uh, super internet internet super highway but the MBN doesn't work it's uh, <laughs> something's <laughs> wrong with it apparently, apparently yeah basically um, most of Melbourne's been down for the best part of a couple of days because yeah it's just kind of exploded 
So isn't that Stephen just... Stephen Conroy down there again, is he? He's just not visiting <laughs> Melbourne, is he? <laughs> <laughs> the big red button. That's crazy. But isn't that crazy? Oh, like, God. the NBA... Like, so it shouldn't... That shouldn't happen. That should well, not happen. I'll no. give you a clue. There's his, uh, there's his speed test results that were done on Monday. So he's getting 91 meg down and 38 meg up. So that's, you know, pretty decent. So good. Yeah. And uh, so he was he was really happy with that. And um, anyway, so I managed to get a hold of him on Skype last night and said, you know, what's going on? I haven't heard you from you for a while. So he... Um, uh, sent you another picture? Just, yeah, he sent me another picture, which I'm just trying to find as, as we speak. In an envelope. And he showed me the... Uh, <laughs> this was when, mind you, this was about the 20th time he actually did a speed test because... It continually just pinged out because it was unable to uh, it was unable to connect to the server, and he had pings going to Google.com of like four and five seconds. Um, but when he did eventually get a speed test, he got a download of three point six and an upload of two point six really? meg. My um, dongle's ten times faster. But than that's it. the mm. fastest it's been in three days. <laughs> that is it, so bad. It is, but that up in saying that that upload is still faster than what yeah, I can get. Is, well, <laughs> yeah, the problem is it doesn't work. His Rely his ping well. his ping and stability of the connection is so bad it's completely unusable. Oh, look the ping three hundred and fifty four. Yeah, yeah, that's rubbish. <laughs> that's absolutely rubbish. But um, uh, but anyway, so, so. that's that's uh, what that's where uh, Jace is tonight. So hi, Jace, on the podcast. He'll be listening probably. Uh, now, Will, you were you were about to launch yourself into another story. I was just going to say, that talking about Microsoft, um, the release of the Android Nokia X range just prior to the purchase of the company by Microsoft left many people asking what the future of Nokia X series was. Um, with the launch of the X2 last month Extinct. and the purchase has gone through, it seemed the series could stick around. But overnight, new Microsoft CEO um, has decided... Well, that doesn't make any sense. Oh, there's a bit missing. <laughs> has overnight sent a letter to staff outlining some future plans for the Nokia X series. Um, Microsoft team will lose a total of 18,000 staff. Mm. Uh, Twelve and a half of those will come from the newly merged Nokia division. Um, and the, the Nokia team, will the losses will come mainly from the professional and the factory workers. Um, they've got to receive severance packages, of course. And on the Nokia side of things, if you're hoping for other Android devices, there's not much hope. Um, they've shown that they'll be focusing Microsoft on Windows Universal apps. So basically, um, you're going to have bad phones running really bad software. So, yeah, well done, Nokia. You've you've you've, you've, you've done it again. Up. You're on you're you're on you're on the boil. <laughs> Maybe they could put you're Skype on, the ball, on yeah, them. You, you know, Skype works on it, uh, Eric. So well, right. something's got to. <laughs> You'd be right with that. <laughs> Skype works on it. Oh yeah. wow! <laughs> now uh, Dell has embraced Bitcoin. Looks like everyone. Well, you know, a lot of people are yeah, jumping on this. I, good, I'm a bit scared. No too. Well, there's no like there's no. There's no actual real world currency you can trust, so why not trust something that's made up? It's oh, fun. Oh, you're a cynic. Oh, you're no, a cynic. I love Bitcoin. It's great. I think it's the oh. best thing ever. Yeah, but tax office will be right onto you. <laughs> you can hear it. You can hear the the sirens going off. Can you hear the little? Hang on. This, they're, they're tapping into your. Oh, they, 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 they did that. Connection. They did that a long time ago. I tell you. But anyway, uh, Dell, uh, the the pilot allows customers to buy any product. On Dell's consumer, EPP, or small, medium business sites in the US uh, with Bitcoin. Dell is also planning a promotion where customers get a 10% discount on new Alienware computers by using Bitcoin. Um, wow. Dell also points out that Bitcoin account isn't tied to any financial institutions, can't be frozen, and carries lower transaction fees than most major credit cards. But yep. in saying that, you know... That's 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 not as good as how cold hard normal cash in the bank, is it? Give me a give me you, a you, cold hard green back any day. You find me yeah. anywhere that says our our currency is backed by anything. Oh, not anymore. You won't find that exactly. <laughs> <laughs> our currency is worth nothing. It's worth less than what it's printed on, which is why they're getting rid of the five cent piece because it costs them more to make it than it's worth. Oh, is that going? I like the five cent piece. Yep. When's that nope, going? It's going. Oh, really. Yep. Um, I don't know when. I can't remember. The, I read the story last week sometime. They're bringing I, back the one cent piece in its place. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's going away and they're going, to, they're going to make, I believe they're going to make all the coin in the line smaller to save costs. Yeah, right. Now, How um, much smaller can a $2 coin get? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, well, um, the funny thing is the coin is supposed to be worth... Um, the face value of the coin is what the coin, what, what the metal that goes into that be, coin yeah, is supposed to be yeah. worth. Yeah, exactly. And not only that too, they also had, um, I don't know how long ago this was, that 
if the coin wasn't made, if the coin wasn't the same value as the face value, the actual metal in it, they yep. had the yep. equivalent in gold. So had the gold standard, the gold backing. So if yeah. if there was you know so a no. thousand a thousand dollars in circulation, they had a thousand dollars in gold in, mm, in the right. reserve, Federal Reserve or the Reserve Bank. Um, yep. they got rid of that. Sold the gold. We, we need sold to pay it for the gold. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Our currency, America's currency, they're worth absolutely yeah. really squat. I'd still rather have it than uh, Bitcoin, though. So. I'd still rather have it. Yeah. I'd now, rather have gold, to be honest. Well, yeah, true. Yeah, but, me too. But now, uh, Liz, Liz, before we go on, I just wanted, Eric, if you could, can you just move that mic a bit closer to your gob? Hello. That might, that might be a little bit better. Yeah, thanks. Uh, you just this is, uh, Will was drowning you out. <clears throat> Oh, sorry about that. He oh, just sure. does that on purpose. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, here we go. What do you got here, Will? This is uh, somebody, one of uh, Jason's friends, who replied to him on uh, on Facebook when he should, <laughs> when he put up his, his speed. Eight hundred and thirty five <laughs> meg down and nine hundred and eighteen meg up. <laughs> wow! What's his ping? Look at his ping. One, One millisecond. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's uh, I, I I want that. That's that's I'm moving to Kansas just for that. Actually, Kansas, that's, that's where the black that's fiber was. Fiber. That's the Google. That's where Google Fiber is. Yeah, yeah, that was their black fiber network, the dark fiber, wasn't it? They called it. No, no, they installed that. That's new. Oh, okay. That's a full full installation. Why can't they install they it out here? They, the, they had that competition. You know, you know, put in your submissions why we should put Google Fiber in your town for the first go, and oh, Kansas right. won the comp. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I didn't good for the good for Kansas. That's yeah. where Dorothy's from. Yes, the Wizard of Oz. She wanted to go home. She went home. Now she's got fast internet. She's uh, home now. Now look at this iPhone six, Eric. What's going on? There's uh. What about it, mate? <laughs> Rumors. Oh, they're 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 everywhere. The general belief, or well, that they believe, Amazon has released uh, the specs of the iPhone six. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah true. False. What do you reckon? Oh, look, it's probably true. I reckon There's always some truth to it anyway. Yeah, the, the general belief ah. is the smartphone will come in two... They're going to release They're going to release it five months after the 4.7 inch comes out. What, the bigger one? They're going to release them separately. Yep, the bigger one. Oh, that's rubbish. Because they don't want they don't want each each other to to bastardize each other's sales. Yeah, but you're either a 4.7 or a 5.5. Well, most guys will say they're five point five, but I think they're lying. <laughs> anyway, the one aimed at regular consumers <laughs> and the bigger five point five inch handset that's uh, said to to target the premium market. I don't know. I, I'm pretty keen. I don't on... know about that, but I'm I'm, I'm fairly below premium. <laughs> <laughs> the the listing also. So what happened was uh, it, it came up on Amazon as a listing. Someone screen grabbed it there. But look, uh, the listing also reveals that the device will be running on the iOS 8 operating system and that it will come equipped with 64 gig internal storage memory. So that's probably one of the variants. Now, Amazon Japan... How much? Yes, well, Amazon, uh, it was transferred into... 140. No, yeah, transferred into uh, American dollars. It was about $1,300. So it's probably not... Oh, wow. Yeah, it's probably not right. That's what made me think that this is probably just a placeholder. I reckon they've just published yeah, it by right, mistake. Right. It, it'll what's be that like back what's, when what's the, that uh, figure? What's that dollar figure? That yen figure on there? Is it 140? 140, is it? Yeah. Okay. So Amazon. It'll be like when the uh, when the Xbox 1400 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, we'll go older. I was gonna say it'd be like when the Xbox 360 first came out and um, all over eBay was for sale Xbox 360 display box only. And they were getting six, seven, eight hundred dollars just for the people for the privilege of having a display box before the unit come out. How oh. stupid are people? <laughs> very. How freaking <laughs> stupid. Yeah, very. Uh, now Amazon Japan claims that they will have the iPhone six in stock starting September thirty, uh, which coincides with many rumors uh, regarding to re- its release date. Most sources suggest that the device will be announced sometime during mid September, which is pretty much like the norm, uh, either on the fifteenth or the nineteenth. And Eric might be able to check if one of those is a Tuesday because I think Tuesdays is the is Apple Love Day, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think it's Tuesdays. Apple Love Day. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, uh, what is it? What date? The fifteenth, the fifteenth or the nineteenth, and it will be made available. September. Yes, and it will be made fifteenth av- for purchase oh, towards well, the end of the month. Fifteenth is fifteenth is a Monday, and the nineteenth is a Friday. So it could be the um, it could be the Friday because then people can line up like idiots because it's yep. the weekend. 
but it won't be in. It's, it says in stock on the on the Amazon. It says in stock September thirty. What's September thirty? Have you got uh, that? That check, those little details check. there. September thirty. Hang on one minute. September thirty. I mean September thirty. I'd go for a Friday. It's a Tuesday. Oh, that's a Tuesday. Tuesday. Oh, well, that's a Tuesday. But who knows? So sleepover. <laughs> 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 Round the corner. Now I reckon. Look, as I Sleep said, over. it's just a placeholder. I reckon. I don't. There's any, any, any story really here? Is there? I think it's just all big. No, no story. Nothing to see here. Have a blue. All right. Um, Will, what are you up to? Yes, sir. Well, speaking of, uh, seem to be on a little uh, apps and and little gadgets review. So I'll keep going with that. It seems to be a uh, few things out at the moment. This one's really good. Um, uh, <sighs> I suppose most people have got older uh, grandparents or older parents or whatever, and they have the little safety button things, the distress button. So if they fall over or oh, they need yeah. a help, they can press a button and um, you know call for help. Yeah. Um, so these guys have now developed a little Bluetooth e-button, the same sort of deal, hangs around your neck or can put in your pocket or whatever you want. And it can be set up when it's obviously Bluetooth, so you know it can be links to your phone. And it can be set up to do... A million different things, everything from um, geo geolocation. So it'll send your GPS coordinates. It'll send a picture of the Google Maps. It'll send a predetermined thing to a predetermined phone number. Um, you know, if somebody falls down or whatever, uh, works up to twenty meters away from the actual phone. Uh, you can do other things. <laughs> One of the examples they've got here is because it's um, fully discreet and fully user configurable. You could set it up to say you press the button. And it'll send a predetermined message to your mate to give you a call to get you out of a meeting or something like that. So oh, bail me out. Yes, <laughs> bail me out. That's what I. So mean. there's a few no, different options. Um, but uh, the actual <clears throat> um, the app is um, two bucks, and the device itself, I believe, is about thirty bucks. Um, but honestly, if you've got older, you know, parents or grandparents or someone with a disability in the house. Chances are these days they've already got a smartphone or at least a Bluetooth capable phone. Yeah. Um, this would be a really good device instead of having the big box hooked up to the telephone, which that means you need the landline and you need to have this and that. Now, you could just carry, you know, and the, their phone can, it works 20 meters away. So if they leave their phone in the middle of the house, say in the kitchen, for example, all they can do is carry this device on them. And they'll, and if something happens, all they can do is press a button. Mm. So well, it can also be used. Good um, idea. To send your coordinates, so you can, if you're, say, uh, a shift worker, especially if you're if you're a woman and you're a shift worker and you're walking out to your car in the middle of the night, um, you carry this with you. So you don't need to have a big clunky phone. You can, you know, you're not a, a prime target by showing people what phone you've got and stuff like that. You just have this hanging around your neck or in your pocket, walk out. If something happens, press the button, hmm. you know, it's instantly transferred across. So. Yeah, oh, that's good. Yeah, you, you have been a little bit of a gadget man the last couple of weeks, haven't you? You've been. Uh, mm, I have. Have you got? Have you? There's, there's a, have you got a Chromecast? I do. I was actually. It was my next. Uh, my next story was about Chromecast. Oh, how do you like that? <laughs> I must have read your mind. All right, tell me so, about Chromecast, please. Yeah, well, I've got a Chromecast. I've had one since they basically came out. I was one of the one of the first schmucks to go out and pay full price for one. Um, what? Forty five bucks. They're only forty nine bucks anyway. But now mm. they're down to thirty nine dollars at Dick Smith. Um, five dollars postage if you can order it online. Some stores still have some. Um, and if that's the case, you know, you're quite welcome to go out and get one. Chromecast is getting better and better. They keep updating the app. The actual firmware on the Chromecast itself keeps being updated. Um, there's doing a lot more things now that, that you couldn't do with it when it first came out. Is the firmware it's, auto updated? Or have you got to... It does, yeah. That's good. Because it, it see because what the way it works is it works over your wireless network. Yeah. That's how it communicates with the phone. So as soon as there's an update, it gets pushed out to the device. Um, now, if you don't have a um, wireless network, in say you go to a hotel, for example, there's no wireless network, you the device itself will become an ad hoc network. So you can actually still connect to it. You can still nice. you know, throw your movies across, throw your pictures across, whatever. Um, with the internal network. There's been a few features added recently, things like screen mirroring. Mm. So now if you've got a device, you know, you've got your phone sitting in front of you, um, you can push that up onto the TV, you know, pull out your Wi-Fi keyboard and mouse and you've got a 50-inch, um, 
you know, yeah. email program or, or whatever you want to do, you know, games or now that's or something. Um, just just hang on for a sec. That's something you can't do with an Apple TV, isn't it, Eric? You can't use well, it as an ad hoc. Like if you if you're not connected to Wi-Fi, you can't just stream it straight to the Apple TV. No, you've got to be. It's got to be on your same Wi-Fi network. So on mm. Apple TV, like we use, the, I can put my Mac. The newer Macs have got that little symbol. Yeah, but it has to be on the um, uh, Wi-Fi network. Yeah, on the Wi-Fi network, and you. But you, yeah, once you're on the Wi-Fi network, because you're going to be, look, let's face, it, you're going to be on the Wi-Fi network if you're on the, on the internet. So I'll go on there and I'll check my emails on the on the 42 inch screen and mm. sit on the lounge and type away and browse well, websites. That, I suppose that's one advantage so far, Will. So that that you've got you've got one. So yeah, keep, that's cheap. Keep, keep going. Oh well, not here's, oh, a little, here's one. This is this this is a little secret for you. Uh, uh, what you call it? Um, what's it? What's it called? Yos- Yosemite OS yeah. X Yosemite. Yosemite. Uh, the the iTunes the iTunes um, browser is very different, similar but different, and you can now stream whatever's on playing in your iTunes, like a movie or music or whatever, to multiple. Um, oh. Speakers, right at the same time, right. Well, you wouldn't be much doing much good streaming a movie to speakers, multiple speakers. You need no, the vision or, or, or no or Apple TVs, whatever you've hooked up. Oh, okay, yeah, right. You can have no, that's all right. So, for example, I've got here, I've got bedroom Apple TV, I've got um, Emily's um, in my daughter's room. There's a uh, what you call it, the Apple Airport Express. Yeah, yeah, right, which you can plug speakers into. Then you've got the family room, Apple TV. And then the other two daughters have got Airport Express in their bedrooms as well, which you can plug speakers into. Yep. And then you've got the Rumpus Room, Apple TV. So I could click music, right, or play something, and I can stream it throughout the whole house. Yeah. Yeah, that's not too bad. The, yeah, that's, that's all right. That's a new feature. Yeah, right. Oh, that's good. That sounds good. Now, uh, yeah, sorry, we'll keep, sorry to interrupt you there with a uh, news Apple News TV break. But you keep right, no, you're right. That's something you pretty much, you know, I've pretty much covered a lot now, but yeah. So there's things like now you can stream. Um, there's a button that puts onto your Chrome browser, and uh, you can actually um, Google Cast whatever's on your browser, whether it be a website, whether it be a YouTube video, whether it be. I actually, what I actually do is I'll load up um, some nights when Milo's streaming or um, when um, you know I want to watch a, a live stream on on thing and the. Raspberry Pi that I've got is great for media center, but it doesn't handle live streaming. Um, so I actually load the stream up on my computer and then I hit the share Chromecast thing and throw it across onto the TV and I can actually watch the stream on the TV. So, mm. yeah, look, really everything's good. getting pretty good, good, isn't it? Good. Yeah. I mean, for the price, for the sake of 30, what is it? What's it down to now? 39, 39. bucks. Um, it's really worth going to go and pick one up. Um, they're, they're handy to have. Well, we take one down to, our, to the in laws. Because their internet's horrible, but I can store a heap of stuff on my phone. And if we want to watch a movie or if I want to do something, I can throw up the screen there, use my 3G on the net, whatever, and, and is, do it that way. Is, so, is there an iOS app for it? Um, I'm going to say no. <laughs> <Would> <laughs> I it? actually, there, I mean, there might be. I don't know. I, it, I it's don't entirely know. possible somebody's made one, but I, uh, it's not designed for the iOS. It's designed for. Since it's given that it's running uh, Android, yeah, it's kind of designed. But it would be, Android, a, so. would be, would that be a bit of a coup? I reckon you know, like Chrome. I don't think, you know? I don't think the iPhone would allow it to happen because it needs permissions that I don't think Apple will give you. There you go, Chromecast app. <laughs> Oh, well, just, yeah. Apple will buy Chromecast now and shut it down. I'd be <laughs> curious to see how what the features are. I'd actually like to. Uh, to do, do a comparison between, I don't have the iPhone mm. to do it, but I'd like to do the comparison between the <laughs> iPhone and the Android well, to see what the features are. And well, I could probably do that because I was I would like to have bought one a Chromecast myself, but I thought, well, what's the point? <laughs> I don't have an Android. But on the this is from the iOS store here. Chromecast is the easiest way to enjoy online video and anything from your web on your TV. Plug it into any HD TV and control it with your existing smartphone, tablet, or laptop. No remote. So what, Ca- yep. what does it use? Is it just Bluetooth, is it? Set up your Chromecast Wi-Fi. to work with your Wi-Fi. Manage your Chromecast yep. settings, such as changing your device name, Wi-Fi passwords, okay. etc. So they look. I'm going to actually say that. Uh, look, I'm going to. You know how Apple is about all these things. I'm going to download that right now because I don't want to wake up tomorrow mm. and find that it's been oiked. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know what they're like. 
So let me yes, I'm just yeah. entering password to download that. So there you go. Yeah, what it does is it um, it uses when you first plug it in, it it starts its own ad hoc network that you connect to, and then uh, you set it up via the ad hoc network. That's where you put your permissions and everything in, and your password in for your own network, and then it uh, it switches over to that. Oh, look at this, Will. Look at this. This is um. Since I put Chromecast into the App Store, we've got here Photo okay. Wall God for Chromecast. Me. We've got Photocast for Chromecast. Uh, Chrome Stream MKV MP4. Nice. Uh, look, there's all, all, all there's everything here. Arcade Cast. Uh, Google Play Movies and TV. Cast on TV. Free music. Ah, oh, look at this. Go Tic Tac Chromecast. <laughs> oh, it's it's gone off. It's gone crazy. Photo for Chromecast. Stevie for Chromecast. Yeah, you know <laughs> now you know what I've been doing for the last eight weeks. <laughs> cloud for Chromecast. What the hell's cloud for Chromecast? Let's have a look at this. Cloud. Oh, look. You know where I'm going Surely. tomorrow, don't you? Dick Smith. <laughs> <laughs> you, with, the, with the cloud for Chromecast, you can see your content stored on Dropbox and OneDrive on your TV. Oh, look at it. Well, that's part of it. See, because you can do the screencasting, so you can do all that from the default app now. Yeah. Yeah, that's all right, isn't it? That's but good. But as I said, I mean, it's, it, because you can use it through your computer, you can use it through multiple devices. It's not attached to one specific device. Anything that's on the network basically can can use it. So, yeah, it's pretty neat. Yeah, all right. Good stuff. Oh, yeah, well, I am. Dick Smith, eh? 39 bucks on there tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What else have you got, Will? I, I think uh, I'm out. So, <laughs> that's all up to you. There's a uh, there's another one that I've, I've actually, upon reading it, I wasn't sure. So basically what it is, you can see that picture there. It's a effectively an e-ink six-inch display that's built into a, a case for your phone. Yeah, now, if right. you've got something like a um, you've got something like a Note three already, you're gonna it's gonna be basically the same size as the device. That's obviously on the seven-inch um, tablet. Um, but I'm like, well, okay, yeah, it's two screens, but they're not really, you know. It's not really a screen like you think of the word, but then I started thinking about it. I'm like, okay, well, I was reading through the descriptions, and you can do things like um, you've got obviously access to a second display, but because it's a it's an ink, it doesn't use any power. So mm. while ever it's on, you can read it in the daylight, and you can use it for anything from reading books. You can read emails, SMSs. Um, you can read uh, text based websites. You can do um, all your normal. Um, notifications and, and things like that. You can use it as a phone. You can actually dial and receive calls with it. Um, you can use it, activate the speaker phone. You can uh, it gets all your alerts like you miss calls and, and, and things like that as well. Of course, obviously, you can use it as a book reader. Um, so I think actually thinking about it, it's not a bad idea because if you've got a display that you could, don't have to turn on the backlight, turn on all the you know, the pixels and everything and chew your battery up and you have a display like this where it's always on. You can just quickly look at it, get the latest message that's come in, put it back down and it doesn't really affect your battery life. Yeah, right. Yeah, sweet. So That's all right. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Like a lot of people out there laugh to like reading books. And, uh, well, that's the stuff. thing too. I mean, the e-ink screens are much better on your on eyes, your eyes and much yeah. more natural than... Yeah, for um, sure. ...than the actual, you know, reading. Like if you've ever sat down and read a book, even on a... Well, phones are almost impossible. On a phone this size, you can get away with it. On a tablet, seven inch, yeah, it's not too bad. But if you know On you fall phone. asleep and smash in the head, it nearly knocks you out. <laughs> um, <laughs> but if you've got just that e-ink screen, because it's running via Bluetooth, mm. so you can take, you can use just that screen. So the book's stored on the phone. It's going to update whenever there's updates available, all that sort of stuff. You take that little screen. It's got a couple of you know previous and next buttons on it, and it's in its own. They do actually. Oh, the other article had the measurements on it. Um, but it's something like three mil thick. Um, so, yeah, it, it weighs almost nothing. And it would basically be like be reading um, a book. You know, you hold it there and, and it's good. So Yeah. I want to get it like some sort of device that you can stick to your wall so it sort of comes up over your head and just, you know, in front of your face and when you're in bed. Well, there's, there is ones if you've got a bed head, they clamp onto the bed head That's and they've I got need. a big flexi arm on them, yeah. Yeah, I need one of those. That'd be good. Wouldn't that be good? That's what I need. Until you wake up in the middle of the night and you sit up and you... St- I don't wake up. <laughs> head, <laughs> head, your head, head, head butt your tablet and your tablet goes flying across the room and lands on your missus' head. Yeah, you, that's going to be fantastic, man. Get one of those. You, you'll be up for a murder charge. 
Oh, you mo- drop one of those, you know, you drop an iPad too on someone's head from from four foot in the air. It's gonna hurt. It would hurt. <laughs> it would hurt. Uh, all right, now I think Lord Templar has sent me a video. So do we want to watch Lord Templar's video? Now, it's c- just the uh, Microsoft. You know, we all know how good Microsoft are at marketing. Yeah, and we mm. all know how uncheesy they are. You must yeah, watch. Right. You must watch this. Yeah. So what? What is this? Give us a. What are they trying to do? It's a parody of. Uh, I'm sexy and you know it. Right. So is this one? Is is this one of your favourite songs? I wouldn't say it's my favourite, but (laughs) it's just Microsoft. I like the parody. Before I play it, before I play it, uh, it's got here to promote its OneNote product. The clip changes the song's words to "click it and I note it." And much, and uh, yeah. then the paragraph underneath the video, it says, if you manage to get past six seconds of the clip without wanting to put your head into a blender, then you would have seen a crew of Dorkwood OneNote engineers dancing around in an attempt to copy. <laughs> <laughs> My ass off. Well, Microsoft, they are so bad at this. <laughs> Change your advertising agency. You're terrible. Well, right. The problem is they do, but the problem is the person they fire, they hire the person who was trained by him. So <laughs> let's see if we can get past six seconds. Dorky already. When I know on my brand new service, hey dams fly. I clip with my pen, capture that screen with a click click friend, yeah. This is how I work, kickstand out, oh, I'm on the go. All the girls they got to know, yeah, the cover comes in blue and purple. Uh, not on my surface, I come on my surface, more not on my surface. It's out when I walk into class, yeah. this is what I see. Okay. Everybody wants my surface Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that's all right, isn't it? <laughs> hey, it's uh, the the super part is everything they're doing there has been able to be done on Samsung for the last couple of years. But the, there's, the, uh, I see what they're trying to do, and it's not bad. It's not too bad as far as their advertising goes. I've seen far worse. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I don't know. I think that comes pretty close to it. Yeah, but, uh, I like uh, if, uh, and I've always said this one thing: if I ever had the money, I would have like a pool table surface. Like the Microsoft Surface, like in, yeah. integrated into a pool table or something. I reckon Better. that would be fantastic. I want something that just rolls up like a yoga mat, and I can put it down anywhere, and it's a surface. Well, yeah, that that's it. I mean, if you've ever read a book, there's a book called Neil Stevenson by um called The Diamond Age, and in that they actually have um like little bits of paper that fold up into like business card sizes, and you can just continually unfold them into this. Yeah, massive you big got that. paper. There's a. I don't know if you've seen this. Will you might have seen this. There's this little keyboard you can get. You plug you, you plug it into your desktop, right? And there's a little um, like a reverse heads-up display. Yeah, the uh, right. inf- it projects the, and the, it projects onto the keyboard the, onto your yeah. desk. Yeah, yep. you, that you, actually you, started. I had one of those back when I had my Nokia fifty one ten. So that's how long that's been around. Yeah, but you needed one when you had a fifty one ten. Well, yeah, pretty much. But the yeah, thing is, it's not the problem. Is it's not tactile. Because you know when no. you're at a desk, it's a hard surface. So that's yeah. right. Yeah. That's always been the and that's always been the biggest problem with those. Um, yeah. Regardless of of who's made them or what particular Correct. style they are, and I remember even back in the day, and I actually found the hard surface was worse. Hard um, surfaces if, are worse. They are. If there's, you can see one there. Oh, there you go. Yeah, and that's what it does. It literally displays an infrared pad. And uh, every bug in the room triggers random letters. So, I mean, it's a great <laughs> idea. It tracks the moths too, so you can't even type after a while. <laughs> You're better off just speaking so. stuff. Think the, the voice recognition is getting pretty good, isn't it, these days? It's very good now. It is very yeah. good now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, look, said, Siri's pretty good. I mean, the um, I've actually noticed because I've got a, I just bought a, what would you call a relatively cheap head deck. Like I spent 169 bucks, I think, on a new head deck for the car, which has got, uh, it does allows two simultaneous connections and things like that via Bluetooth, um, and it came with a microphone that you can mount anywhere in the in the car. And I've got it sitting, you know, on, on in front of my dash right in front of me. And even in the car on the highway with the aircon on and stuff like that, it doesn't do a bad job. You know, you can say call someone, and yeah. it 
sometimes it might give you two options, but usually it's pretty spot on. Yeah, they're not bad now, um, especially when you've got, when you've got no noise cancelling microphones. Mm. Um, it well, tends to do. block out everything else. The the actually something I noticed about the um, the Note Three is it's got noise cancelling microphones in it. And you're thinking, okay, I'm going to use a Bluetooth device. It's not going to do that, but it still uses the the background cancellation from the device. So it actually opens the Bluetooth channel, gets the sound that's coming from the Bluetooth mic, and then gets the sound that's coming from where the device is located, and it still does noise cancellation even over Bluetooth. Yeah, that's good. Mm. So it's surprising. Well, the audio quality, I, we went and saw a concert ages and ages ago. Oh, not that long ago. Well, well I suppose 12 months ago now. <laughs> um, and we're sitting down the back. Like, it was just at a RSL club. We're sitting down the back of the room. And I just sat my phone on the table just recording audio. And I thought, oh, I might get a few snippets out of it just to throw up on Facebook or something, you know. And <laughs> basically, the entire concert was actually more more. It was easier to listen to on the phone than it was when we were there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because you got you, cause your, your, our brain doesn't noise cancel. No, my brain's always full of noise. But... I wish it, I wish it would. There's a few people, yeah. there's a few people I'd like to block out. Let me tell you, and a, and a couple oh, that will yeah. live with you. Hey, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, Not David. Not now, no. <laughs> All right. All right, have you got any more, Will? I think we're just about at the at the end here. We're just about at the end. One thing I'd like to say is um, a friend of mine is just coming back into geocaching. She started doing it a while back, and I'd completely forgotten about it. I used to do it years ago. If you want something fun to do by yourself or with the kids or with family and whatever, um, have a look at leave, geocaching. Leave them at home and go to the footy. <laughs> <laughs> geocaching is great fun. It's very rewarding, and you can meet some really good people doing it. So check that out. It's available on anything with a GPS, effectively. That's the way it works. So, yeah. Yeah, good stuff. All right. All right, well, I think we're going to call it quits. So uh, thanks for joining us for the 400th episode. Thanks, uh, Will and Eric. Thanks for coming in. Happy uh, 400th. No worries, sir. All that sort of stuff. Don't forget Congratulations to... once again. Thank you. Yes, Will. Don't forget to go to obsidianloft.com and check out our Minecraft uh, podcast and all the other things that go on there. So um, I will thank you. If there, I know there's been some listeners who have come across from ATH. So thank you very much for your support and uh, keep it up, guys. Thank you much, Lee. All right, good stuff. When's the next uh, Obsidian Loft coming out? Uh, that depends on Melbourne. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good God. <laughs> so between now and 2043, I think so there's one G. All right. When, and when, the, when they build the NBN. <laughs> and, and before we go, we got one last, we got another tweet here uh, from Kangaroo Opals. Uh, can't get into the lounge. Happy 400th, you sexy boys and Eric. So, <laughs> what's his address? On a we'll give punch you his phone number the, later. I'm going to punch him in the throat. <laughs> All right, so uh, that's good. So, all right, don't forget the athwebhosting.com that you go and have a look at that. Uh, grab yourself some hosting. And I know, uh, there's look, there's a few people. Hopefully, that if you guys are listening to the show, they've signed up recently to us. If you have any dramas, uh, just give us a ring or send us an email and uh, try and put, point you in the right direction if you've got any trouble setting it all up, okay? So uh, that's always there. Uh, if I can't answer you straight away, well, just send me an email and, and uh, we'll fix it up. Shops work. Shops work. If I can make a shop work, anybody can. <laughs> That's right. We're going to talk to you quickly about that. Let's just quickly talk to Will about his, his shop. You're, you're building a shop out of what? Um, I was uh, Jay Shoe. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, as you know, I mean, <laughs> you set up the uh, our website originally for Joomla for because Joomla? at the point, you know, I, I had no idea what. I just We just wanted something up and running and, and everything. I'm like, oh, great. Now we're going to be stuck with this thing that we're never going to be able to use. And it's going to be painful if we want to edit it and everything like that. But no, it was really simple. I just went on to um, Joomla, hunted around until I found um, uh, Joomla e-commerce or Ace, Ace Shop, A-C-E-S-H-O-P, is actually, the, uh, is actually the, the app I ended up using. And it's, I mean, like anything, initial setup is painful. You've got to manually go in, add the photos, add the item, add the description, you know, it's all that sort of stuff. So that mm. was painful. But once I got it set up and running, um, you can even do things. We've, I've actually got it set up now. So you've got to create an account and you've got to log in before you can see the price. You yep. can order things online. You can reserve them to come in and pick them up in the shop. Um, it's got all the details on items. It's got pictures. It's got use case scenarios. It's got all this built-in um, cross-referencing with searches and things like that. So it's a really good little program. There are other modules you can add, different payment modules, different you know checkout options, blah blah blah, and they're really cheap, ten bucks for a module here and there. Yep. Um, 
but it's so easy. Like it took me a while to figure out that, how to make things work, but once you get your wrap your head around the way Joomla um, uses different terminologies to do the same sort of thing, yeah. um, once you've figured that out, it's actually really simple. As mm. I said, if I can do it, I, I mean, I'm the last web page I built was Netscape Navigator Gold. So. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's a while ago. It's a while ago. Is that what you're showing us now? <laughs> no, that's uh, so, yeah. That's <laughs> that's the uh, the A shop goal, and that's good um, because and, yeah, because yeah, uh, Will just added that that extension to his Joomla page, and then it sort of yep. uh, it, it it just meld molded in, didn't it? It just looks like it's part of the site. It's not like something yeah, separate I mean, or anything like that. It uses all the templates. Like it keeps the existing heading there. It uses you'll notice the font that it's using there. If I go back to the home page. It's the same font that's that's back on the home page. Um, yep. You know, it, it, it all sort of just blends automatically. You can change it. You can buy themes. You can do all that sort of stuff. But, I mean, why? It, it does such a good job. I mean, it even comes with banners straight up front, like rotating banners and things like that. That's that's all already set up. You just add your pictures to it. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. And that's so what are you doing on my website, Glenn? Uh, yes, I can talk to you <laughs> later about that. Oh, I did that one. Did you like that one? Except the shop. That was a good one. And yeah. That's, that's yeah, Glenn did this one. And that's uh, except the shop part. Go to the homepage, Will. This is what you get when, I, when you when you ask <laughs> me to do a web page. I just not, need a payment gateway for me, Glenwood. Yeah, I've got one for you. So I've sussed it out. I'll talk to you about that. Yeah. Right, you I have see the uh, Glenn, Glenn, Glenn's even managed to get the whole Facebook integration thing going on. So that counts as live text. So it helps in your Google rankings because your page is constantly being updated. Every time you put something on Facebook, it sees it as fresh text. It goes, hey, your page is updated. Let's get you a bit more Google juice. So... Working hmm. quite well. We're averaging about five thousand unique a month, which is pretty good for a site that's not really it's still under development. So Yeah, wow. That's all right, Will. Good stuff. That's Must, good. Yeah. It's very good. Yeah, good stuff. All right. So uh thank you. Thanks for joining us and uh thanks for all the, the well wishes. We couldn't read them all out, otherwise we'd we'd just be doing that all show, wouldn't we? So anyway, but um <laughs> yeah, thanks to, <laughs> thanks to everyone that's uh listened. Hope you enjoyed the show. We'll see you next week. Uh we're kicking off another hundred. All right. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.